Hey, my name is Brian Wall with WorshipTutorials.com. I have a gear review today. Uh, this is a Shure wireless guitar unit. It is the GLXD wireless guitar system. So the good people at Shure asked me if I would review this, and I said, absolutely, I'd love to do that. So uh, if you're new to wireless guitar systems, they kind of all have a few components in common. One thing you get is a, a transmitter, which is like a little body pack that you would wear um, on your body somewhere. I usually sit mine, uh, clip mine to my strap, kind of put it behind my back so it's out of the way, people don't see it. And that plugs into your guitar. And then that sends a wireless signal to a receiver. And the receiver accepts the signal, uh, converts it back to an analog signal, and then has an output that you would run either to your amp or to your pedals if you run a pedal board. And they mostly just have those basic components. So um, let me show you what Shure's looks like. So the first thing you get is this transmitter pack. It's got a little clip on the back, so like I said, you clip it onto a strap. Um, has an on-off switch right there on the top, and it has a cable that screws down and attaches to it. So the cable is a high quality cable in my opinion. It's got a great Nutric uh, connection uh, at the end there and it screws down so it's not going to go anywhere. You're not going to pull this thing out. I really like this thing. It is sleek. There's no display on it which is I think is a great thing um, because if you like say I were going to turn around during a set somehow people don't see like some digital or some screen on my back. They just see this kind of a black thing. It's very, uh, very unobtrusive. Um, I like it. The next thing that you get with this system is the receiver. And this is why I think Sure has a huge winner on their hands. This is the receiver. And it also doubles as a tuning pedal. That is awesome. Um, currently, I use a, a Sennheiser G3 system. I can't remember the name of it. It's a high quality system. It works really well. Uh, the, the sound quality of it is great. The reliability of it is great. The receiver uh, is this big box with two antenna that stick off of it. And it's big. I hate it. It gets in the way. Um, it has a big display on it that if you face it like toward uh, the congregation in a church, they can see it. Um, if you face it away from people, they see the antenna sticking out of it. Uh, if your stage is elevated, it puts it like right at eye level um, with people, which that's the way most of these systems work. That's kind of what you get. This is really cool, and uh, I really like it. It's a little bit bigger than a standard, like a tuning pedal. Like I use a Boss uh, tuning pedal, kind of what everyone uses. Um, I also have a Pitch Black uh, by Korg and this thing is about the same height but it's a little chunkier but considering you're saving all that space and you're getting a couple functions in one it's awesome. It also comes with a rechargeable battery. A little battery door pops open. This is the battery. It looks kind of like a, a chunky stick of gum. I will talk m about the battery in a little bit because I think it's a very important part of this whole piece. And you get the battery charger. So I got a lot of stuff here sitting in my lap. Um, you get the battery charger. The battery charger is just like a wall wart with a USB input and then a USB cable. And uh, sadly, it, it appears that it's a non-standard uh, connection type. I could be wrong on this, but it's not like a mini USB or a micro USB. It might be micro USB. I'm not exactly sure. You can check out Sure's website and I'm sure it will tell you. But this thing plugs into the actual transmitter. Right here there's a little door that opens. There's also a link button in there. So to link the unit you just turn them both on, push link, and you're good to go. And uh, it plugs in right here to the connection and it charges your battery. So they don't ship like a uh, charging cradle or charging dock or anything like that. So you can't pull your battery out and charge it separate from this piece of hardware. Then there's also uh, the wall or the power cable for this thing. How does this thing sound? I, uh, I plugged it in and used it and uh, 
Well, I'll first say this. I've used wireless units in the past that really killed uh, the sound, the tone of my guitar. I'm not just like a tone freak. Uh, you know, I don't, I'm not one of these guys that think that some batteries in your effects make your sound better than others. Um, but uh, it, to me, if it sounds good, it's good. Um, if you can noticeably tell the difference, then there's something going on. I've used a Line 6 unit in the past. When I turned it on, it just it made everything sound dull. Um, I understand Line 6 makes great uh, guitar or wireless units, so I'm not knocking them. The one that I used, it really left a bad taste in my mouth. Um, maybe I should try out some different ones, but anyway, this one, I could really tell no discernible difference between plugging straight into my amp and then using this system. My Sennheiser system that I use is the same way. I think they sound great. I couldn't tell a difference in either of those units, just using it for a couple weeks and uh, I think I think any guitar wireless system that you use it converts your signal to a digital signal transmits it wirelessly receives it converts it back to analog and then into your into your stuff anytime you do that your tone your sound is going to be altered somehow um, you're going to have something going on Personally, I couldn't tell the difference, so it gets an A-plus on uh, design, gets an A-plus from me on sound. The next thing that I was interested in, and that a lot of the, uh, the worship leaders that, uh, that I work with at my church, we have multiple campuses, so we have a staff of worship leaders, uh, we all wanted to know how uh, accurate is this tuner and how fast does it respond. So some tuners um, that you use... They, they aren't that accurate, or they're kind of hard to dial in if they're all over the place. And sometimes you pluck a note and it takes a little while before it uh, recognizes that. So what I want to do now is sort of turn the thing on, show you how it works, and then I'll get into uh, a tuner and I'll tune it. And uh, we'll use this, this Gretsch that I got here today. So here we go. Let's plug this in. Into the back here. Okay. Plug the... Uh, power up the uh, the unit so there's not an on off switch on this receiver itself you just uh, plug the power into the power receiver and off it goes so this is what it looks like when you turn it on turn on the uh, the transmitter it's just a flick of a switch and you can see it's it's looking okay it found it there we go now we are connected that's about all it took when I was setting this up. Literally, it took me minutes and I had it set up. You get a battery indicator, first off. I'll come back to this later, but um, just really quickly, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but it's got like a little a battery uh, kind of a, a level here. Up to the middle is full. I'm one notch past and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm at six out of seven. Uh, squares or dots, however you want to think about it. That's impressive because I did use this for a full uh, Sunday, which is three services at the campus where I lead worship uh, for New Hope Church. So it went through three services plus a run through in the morning before, which would be like a fourth service, and uh, this thing barely broke a sweat. Get back to that in a little bit. So you hit the button and you're in tuning mode. And I run the tuner on bypass, so that means that it's always on and it's always sending a signal. Typically a tuner will, um, when you hit it to tune, it will mute your signal. Uh, and so that's how this thing was set up out of the box, but it took me about less than a minute in the manual and I learned how to set it into bypass mode. Uh, if you're looking into gear, I recommend that you go read the manual. That's what I do. <laughs> so you can understand how it works, and uh, a lot of time you'll find that your stuff does a lot more stuff than you think it does. So anyway, I got it into bypass mode very quickly, and uh, I'm just going to tune and show you how it works. So here we go. Let's hit an E string. You'll see it picks it up immediately. Let me detune a little bit so you can get a feeling for how, how easy this goes. I went sharp. That's okay. So now I'm a little sharp, now I'm a little flat. You can see that it's kind of in a chromatic mode. D sharp, E, boom, I'm in. Eh, I went a little too far, but there we go. You get the idea. A. So this thing is accurate 
and it picks it up instantly. Um, it's a great tuner. I, uh, I really like this thing as a tuner. I think it does an excellent job. It's easy to tune. Um, it's fast and uh, yeah, it works really well. It was really easy to set up. We have in our, uh, at our campus, we have four wireless microphones. Granted, they are all by Sure, but we have four wireless microphones. And I had that Sennheiser wireless guitar unit going when I set this up and everything worked fine. There was no, um, no uh, interference, anything like that. I was able to walk all around uh, the worship center. I actually walked out into the lobby when I was testing this out and uh, my signal stayed true. So uh, I didn't lose the signal. I'm not sure what uh, they tell you, that you can probably look it up in the specs how far you can go, but in my experience, it was great. I was, you know, a long way from the stage and it was still working where I had this thing set up. So let's talk about the battery. So when I was looking into this unit, the first thing that I thought to myself is this is a bad idea. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, because what happens if I'm about to go on uh, stage and the battery is dead? Or what happens if I'm, so we run nine, 11, and one services. They're back to back to back. What happens if this battery dies uh, during the third service? What am I gonna do? I can't just, uh, I can't just like during the message go in the back and pop in a couple double A's. I'm gonna have to recharge this whole thing. Um, so here's what I did to put it through its paces. I had this thing for two weeks. I used it for two weeks and uh, that included two Sundays, which are uh, a run through at seven. We, we call time at seven, but our run through is like at 730. And then a, a service at nine, 11 and one. And that run through is a full service. So basically four services. And then on Thursdays we rehearse and uh, I pretty much have this thing on for at least three hours uh, for that rehearsal. It's not, our rehearsal is not that long, but I have it on that long. And then during the day, uh, during the week, I would turn it on here and there to kind of get things set up, practice a part here and there, that kind of thing. To test it, I didn't charge it, uh, well, I charged it full before a Sunday service uh, day, and then I didn't charge it again until rehearsal. I figured at rehearsal, I can just put my other system on if it dies, just to see what it would do. Um, so I went all those services on Sunday and a full rehearsal and anything during the week. And then also we had uh, a midweek event. We usually don't, but we had one of those uh, while I was using this thing and another rehearsal for that. So this thing had six worship services, two run throughs before e one before each. It had a special midweek event and it had three rehearsals basically. So I really felt like I put it through its paces. Uh, this battery did not even break a sweat. Um, so using it all day on Sunday and during the week and during a Thursday rehearsal, I want to say this thing never even got close to halfway uh, depleted on the battery. That is awesome. It lasted a long, long time. And if you read in the manual, this thing will tell you each one of these squares corresponds to how many minutes you have left. So that's nice. If you kind of, what I would do is I would say, hey, if it gets down to this mark, I have this much time left. That's kind of how I would approach it. Here is my advice though, because I think it could be easy because the battery is so good to just kind of leave it in here and not think about it. And then all of a sudden you're in the middle of something and you're looking down and you're like, I got 10 minutes left on this thing. What am I going to do? I looked it up. These batteries, I'm going to turn this off for a second. These batteries are $30 brand new. So you can get them from, you know, all kinds of places that uh, carry sure stuff. So $30 for one of these batteries, that's a pretty good deal. It might sound like a lot, but I think that's great because if you consider the lifetime of a wireless unit, say you use it for at least two or three years and it uses traditional batteries, you're gonna spend a lot of money on batteries. So my advice would be to buy two or three, maybe even four batteries, um, keep them charged. You're not gonna spend a lot of money if you consider especially how much money you're gonna spend in the long run. Keep them charged so if you, hey, you forgot to charge something and it's getting low, you can just pop a new battery in there. And uh, I think in that situation, you'd be good to go. Ultimately, you're gonna save money in the long run because you're not buying lots of batteries and uh, you'll save the environment too, which is great. Um, the one downside about that is uh, to charge the battery, you have to use this, uh, this transmitter unit. You can't 
you can't just put it in something else that charges. So that's something to keep in mind if you go with the system and you go with that sort of an idea. You have to kind of be on top of when you're charging because you have to actually use the unit to charge it. So to recap, I really like this thing a lot. Uh, I, I love the fact that the receiver is a tuner. It's a great tuner. It sounds great. The battery works very well. And if you have a couple more, um, you'd be good to go. If I were buying a wireless guitar unit today, uh, which I'm not, sadly I have to send this thing back to Sure. I'd love to keep it, um, but I may consider buying one in the future. If I were buying one today, this is the one I would buy. They told me to be honest, and that is my honest opinion. I think Sure has an awesome product on their hands. Uh, I think they're a great company. I I use a lot of stuff by Sure. Uh, we use Sure wireless microphones at work or at uh, church. And here I use a, uh, at Worship Tutorials, I use a SM7B, and it is a fantastic microphone, um, and they make great stuff. So thank you, Sure, for uh, letting me use this thing and review it for a little bit. Um, go out and get one if you're looking for a guitar unit. I think they're about $450, uh, maybe $500, um, brand new, which is about kind of standard price for a, for a high quality uh, wireless system like this. It's worth every penny, in my opinion, if you are a wireless guitar uh, unit user. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.